Hey y'all, it's your girl Claudia Jordan. We are here to spill the tea and break down the biggest headlines in the news and on social media. So sit back, relax, and get ready to sip this hot tea. Please welcome Al Reynolds. What's up, Al? Hey, what's going on, Claudia? Got your athletic attire on tonight. You ready to run through these topics? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. I guess we're running a train through these topics because we have Armand Wiggins here with us as well. What's up, Armand? <laughs> What's going on, Claudia? What's going Sorry. on, Al? What's going on, Armand? You know, Armand likes threesomes, so we learned. Where was that? Yesterday? <laughs> well, you guys have that in common. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. No comment. Okay. Um, <laughs> how are y'all feeling tonight? And are you drinking on anything? Yeah, you know, I'm doing my buttery Chardonnay, but I also have a hot toddy. I'm double fisted, and that's how crazy the topics are tonight, Soulmate. So you guys don't want to miss not one minute of what we're talking about tonight. Uh, yeah. All I'm these sexual my... terms so soon. Yes. We got threesomes, double fisting, Armand. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, I'm popping a poppy right now. I don't oh, know. <laughs> What's a, a poppy? A, a poppy is like a probiotic sparkling flavored water soda. It's interesting, oh, but it's pretty good. I just good. got excited hearing about it. <laughs> Is that like a popper that's supposed to open your booty up? <laughs> ah, might, listen, I like those too. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, let's delve deep into these topics right now and get into it. Oh, I All see right. what kind of day we're going to have to die. Okay. <laughs> Music mogul L.A. Reid is being sued by former music executive Drew Dixon. Now, she claims L.A. sexually assaulted her twice about 20 years ago. L.A. Reid filed court documents asking his accuser to turn over evidence from another case where she alleges that Russell Simmons also sexually assaulted her. Now, 2024 is the gift that keeps on giving. Seems to be the year of the truth. What are your thoughts on these allegations? Alice, go to you first. Well, you know, Claudia, the one thing we never want to do is say that the victim is lying. But I have to be honest with you. I, I, I've known these two gentlemen for over 20 years. I've vacationed with them. I've been in their homes. And honestly, I just don't see any of this coming from them. So I, for me, I, 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 this is what I wish. I wish people like her, and I feel like maybe that in 2024, we need to create an environment where women or men, when they have been sexually assaulted or victimized in any way, we've got to create an environment where they feel comfortable coming forward at that time, right? And the reason why I say that is because if she's right, this has been 30 years, 30 years that other victims could have experienced the same thing. And had she spoken up sooner, we would have been able to minimize some of the other victims in the situation. That's the only thing I can really say in this space. But for me, I, I, I've hung around with these guys. That, you know, I, I just don't see the two of them, you know, just sexually assaulting someone just because they have power and influence. Have you been anyone <laughs> like they're very cool to men and then they're a different person with their victims. And uh, I, mm -hmm. that's something that's like uh, any woman that's been abused by a man and to hear people say, oh, but he's such a cool guy. Yeah, because he has you're no threat. You know what I mean? Like you're not his prey. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I hear what you're saying, because it's like I've been around girls that probably they while out with their boyfriends and I don't see that side because I'm not dating them, you know. Right. 18 women have also accused Russell of sexual assault, and then he moved to Bali. We know that. And people speculate it's because they have no extradition. So individuals of that crime, come on, Prompto, individuals accused of crimes do not have to return to their country. Mm. There's a lot of this, you know, swirling around this, uh, around him. And I'm, I've definitely been around Russell as well. He was cool to me. But I was never, you know, I don't know. Right. Uh, Armand, what do you think about this? I, and I would say like a tricky thing, right? So. Yeah, it's, it's one of those tricky things when it comes to sexual assault. I never really like to go in too much. I just feel like people need to uh, speak out as soon as they can, as soon as it happens. Um, but one thing I will say is I thought it was interesting. Like, if I'm Russell Simmons, I'm like, well, how can I get in? Like, why are you <laughs> adding? Why do you want to expose me right now? You know, I thought we were kind of laying low. You didn't threw me in the lake of fire now, L.A. Reed. I mean, shit. You know, so, uh, yeah, I hope they get this all figured out. Sexual assault stuff, that's not really my ministry because people get re it's really, really touchy. Mm -hmm. And uh, I stay out of it. I stay clear from that stuff. M Mr. Burns, we have some comments. Let's go to the comments in the chat. Uh, let's see. Mr. Burns said, who cares if you know them? They could still be abusers. 
P. Webb says Russell has groomed Kimura since she was 15. Ansel D'Angelo said twice. This sounds a bit fishy. And if L.A. Uh, is immediately asking for evidence, it seems like he may be in the right. Tayamo said she has spoken up. No one listened to her. They blackballed her and forced her out of the industry. And Scorp1121 said it's not any victim's responsibility to stop abusers. It's the abuser's fault. Mm. Yeah, but at some point, like, so, this is why it gets tricky, because I'm like, we need some evidence. Like, we just start believing right. everything anybody says. Like, at any point, anybody can throw an allegation on you or I, and it's just like, because we're, we have a public platform or we may have, you know, money or whatever you have, then you're just supposed to be believe like, you believe a person, you know what I mean? Just right. because they have less than or they're not the famous one or whatever the case. That's why, for me, I need some proof of something. Right. Uh, we had a comment that said, y'all believe Cassie? Nothing? Well, I mean, Cassidy came with all, to all the receipts. Mm -hmm. She came and with she... a video, audio, text messages, voicemails, girlfriends. She came with a slew of receipts. So it's a totally different it's different in that case. You know, she, she was there for years and she kept all that information and handed it all over to her lawyers who handed it all over to the attorneys. Like, like she had tons and tons of receipts. And she was ready to go. She was ready to go to court with it. Like, and then mm. mind you, she has said nothing else after everything got done. Like you could tell, like she needed, she wanted what she got and she got out. Like she, it was, it was, give me what I got. And, and the work is done. Like, she did what she needed to do. I, I believe Cassie. I do believe Cassie. But I feel like <laughs> the way that she presented it, it was enough there for me to be like, okay, yes, this right. is accurate. You do understand that not everyone's going to have evidence, right? Like that as good as and as efficient, like, you know, as thorough as Cassie. And it doesn't mean that it's not true, you know? Yes, it does mean that it's not true, but it also doesn't mean that it happened just because you said it happened. Oh. I'd rather err on the, car, on the side of, of caution and uh, not, it's... But, but, but you were on Lizzo's side. What do you mean? The oh. other day. But you were Team Lizzo. <laughs> no, no I, no, I really wasn't on her side. I was actually playing devil's advocate because we've talked about Lizzo before. Al, relax. I was not on Lizzo's I, side. Why are you telling me to relax? I'm just you chuckling. So geeked when you have a partner to come from No, me no, don't do case. that. Don't do that. I'm don't doing do it. That. I'm doing it. You geeked um, when you have your partners here, too. Uh, you have one for three years. LQ said, Al, hush, you sound crazy. You're blaming the victim. Russell I clearly said I'm not blaming the victim. I'm clearly uh, said that at the top of the, of the what conversation. LQ, let, let me finish what LQ said. She said, Russell has assaulted a lot of victims and Emerge said it's called people in power can basically do what they want until karma hits. Hey, I guess it's something we'll never know. You know, if you've been a victim, mm. you're going to be more on the side of the victim. If you've not, then you're going to be may maybe more critical thinking about it, I guess. All but right. why, my thing is, why is it so like, when it comes to men, we believe it right away. But when it's a woman, we kind of like, you know, here, go present at the Grammys and let's, it's okay. Right. I mean, you know, we talk about the double standards on the show all the time. It's one of those things in our society. And hey, you're mm. right. Sometimes that is the case. And I'll, I'll give you that. You know what I mean? It is a lot harder because we don't expect it as much from women. So mm. it is harder to, it, it is, We it's harder for us. And we're now getting into 2024 where we are hearing some cases of it. And up until recently, we really didn't hear a lot of that. So I'm, listen, I'm for it. I'm for women that are guilty, of course. And I also, if I've, you heard me on the show before, I am behind legislation that would penalize people that are found guilty of lying on these types of things. Because <laughs> you can really. <laughs> Awkward. <laughs> All right, y'all. DL Hughley has fired back and Monique after her club shake. <laughs> the two have beefed over the years, butting heads over jokes, tour contracts, and other attacks. Take a look. Okay. Monique, uh, if she'd have spent as much time actually writing jokes and writing her Netflix special as she did complaining about not having one, it wouldn't have been trash. It got the wor worst reviews of any Netflix special in history because that's what Monique does. She complains and she has grievances. You never see her being a human being. You never see her being sweet and warm to people. All right. Does D.L. Hughley make any valid points, Armand? Okay, so yesterday, you know, I 
am and what I was and still am team Monique. However, he did make some good points um, throughout that live where mm -hmm. I would I would be lying if I said that Monique doesn't have this thing where she can talk to you like, you know, that auntie with that warmth. But then there's a little bit of manipulation in it a little bit. You know what I mean? And she when, whenever Monique talks, she's always complaining about some sort of grievance. You know, so at some point, you know, you don't want to have a problem with everybody. At some point, whenever we talk about Monique, it's always her airing some sort of grievance about, you know, something. So, you know, Monique does have a little bit of, like, problematic behavior if you ask me and she says it with love you know what i mean so mm -hmm. and then she and she got on there and said that you know she wasn't talking about his wife when she said uh you know it must be hard giving head to a coward i mean well who were you talking about monique you clearly were disrespecting his wife and you were disrespecting dale hughley but because you get on there and say things like baby and sister and love then it's okay you know what i mean like Mon monique is a little bit of a manipulator too i'm not gonna lie but i still yeah. like her Karen D said DL spoke facts. And then we have the opposite. Mr. Burns said, I'm so sick of their beef. It's so old. She tells me the same story every time. Let it go. Al, what do you think? I am. Hey, listen, Karen, you and I are on the same side. He ate Monique up on this one. And I mean, he was very clear about what he said. And and I like that. You know, it, it's it's very interesting. And we do. We like Monique. We've talked about Monique on the show before. We talked about how hard she's worked. We talked about the Parkers. We talked about her success. But you just always have to listen again and again and wonder, why are there always so many grievances? Did you have any positive experiences? Did anybody you work with support you? Did anybody love you? If so, let's hear some more of that. Let's hear some more of that so that people that are following in your footsteps can be encouraged and motivated. Like, I just feel like I understand that she's gone through a lot being that she is a trailblazer in comedy as a black female from Baltimore and a heavy set woman on television. But come on with some positive stories, positive stories, mix those in there too. I'm not saying don't tell your real experience, but mix in some positive stuff so that people can have hope that they can follow in your footsteps and it could be a positive experience for them. That's that's what I thought. But other than that, I, I also agree with one of our soulmates who said that this beef is getting old. I, I just feel like that she needs to stop repeating the same thing as it relates to D.L. Hughley, and D.L. Hughley needs to call it call it truce as well. Leandra Fair said it's uh, but it's about it's about ongoing issues in the business that everyone else complains about, but she does it. Boldly. And I will say this, when it comes to Monique uh, not posting anything positive, she actually did post one thing positive today. And this is probably going to have people gagging. She's going to be on tour with Cat Williams. So uh, that's going to be a lot. I think there's going to be a lot of little viral moments out of that one. So stay tuned for Monique that. Monique is messy. <laughs> <laughs> Unlike anyone here. She's, yeah, she's by herself in her messiness. All right. Last year, Krishan Rock was accused of assaulting singer James Wright. Channel, Chanel, and during Tamar Braxton's Love and War Tour, he filed a criminal case, and now he just filed a lawsuit against the aspiring rapper. Court documents reveal she allegedly hit him multiple times, broke his teeth, scratched his face, and called him a homophobic slur. Mm. Will Krishan Rock ever learn her lesson, and how much money do you think James deserves, Al? Uh, I don't know that... Um... I can tell you how much he deserves, but I will say this, you know, I was very vocal on this platform and I said I needed to see some receipts and they have they have given up the receipts. So now that the receipts are here, James Wright, Chanel, I owe you an apology um, and I'm, I'm sorry that I ever questioned you as being a victim of assault. And to be honest, Christian, now that we know that you have done it, the court documents are in with the hospital papers, etc. run him his money, run him his money for his medical bills, run him his money for days that he missed for work, run him his money for his mental um, anguish that he has suffered, and run him his money for any of the relationships that were soiled or compromised because of this incident. All right, quick comment from you, Armand, before we go to break. He should have backhanded her and sat on her. No, but honestly, be, that's not right. I don't. I think that Krishan Rock needs to pay up and she needs to be humble because she's out of control. Period. All right, coming up next, you will not believe what Utah just banned. And later, guess who Diddy was trying to snag? Stay tuned.
how you been liking it, Dustin? I love it here. I love sparring with you. I love talking trash with Claudia. TGIF. What y'all drinking on? Buttery Chardonnay, my go-to when it comes to spilling this tea. 1942, baby. It's been a celebration all week. Every weekday. Yeah. Are you going to have any left? How about the big bottles, Al? <laughs> <laughs> How big is it? <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's not be sexually harassing our co-hosts this early in the show. I'm not saying we won't. It just won't be this early. <laughs> on Fox Soul. When I got the opportunity to get her, there wasn't no choice. I told myself, I'm going to take custody of my daughter. It's my baby. That's what we're supposed to do as men. Take care of our home, build a foundation, you know what I'm saying? Love, our money, she's my purpose. I'm here to walk with her, hold her hand until she can walk alone. Ain't nothing like being a father in this world. My mother was always very familiar with her neighborhood, but one day she stopped at the stop sign for much longer than usual, and uh, she didn't know whether she should go forward or, or turn, and she wasn't even really sure where she was at. It was very unsettling for her. I felt so much better after my son told me, Mom, I don't want you to worry or be afraid. I'll be there for you, and we'll figure it out. Welcome back to TGIF. All right, y'all, Utah has become the latest state to ban transgender people from using bathrooms that don't align with the sex they were assigned at birth when in public schools and government-owned buildings. Now, Governor Spencer Cox recently signed a bill imposing the restrictions. Now, is this legal discrimination, and what could be a safe solution for everyone? Amon, what do you think? I definitely feel like this is legal discrimination. I just don't understand what the obsession is with, you know, people's genitalia and them going to the bathroom. Um, I don't know. I, I say the answer is just leave people alone. I think that uh, I don't really care if you're a transgender woman, transgender man. If However you feel comfortable in how you identify, I believe you should be able to go to that bathroom that, you know, you identify with. I, I do think this is discrimination for sure. All right, Al. You know, my favorite saying is, where's the outrage? Where's the outrage? I mean, the trans community, the LGBTQ plus community, women, men, all allies should be flipping this state inside out and upside down to refute this. Listen, like, what are we, what are we actually saying? Are you saying that you're afraid that you're going to see something? So if a trans man comes into a man's bathroom, what are the, how do they use the bathroom? They have to go in a stall. Who's going to see them in the stall? If a trans woman goes into a woman's bathroom, how is she going to use the bathroom? She's got to go in the stall because that's what they have in women's bathrooms, a stall, right? Mm -hmm. I, I'm just a little confused. And, and so what's the real issue? The issue is that you don't want them around you or is the issue that you're afraid you're going to see something? I'm like really confused about what the issue is. And if that's the case, you want to know what a, a, a workable solution is, is what I see in the airports around the world. They have a gender neutral bathroom where it can be man or woman. So it has a door. It's only one person. If you got to go use the bathroom, you go use the bathroom. That's that's an easy solution. But to allow this to happen in the state of Utah, I'm telling you, when things like this happen, when you start to like violate people's basic rights, then they have the right to violate other marginalized groups, basic mm -hmm. rights. And so it might start with the trans, but when it starts infiltrating into the black community, then we're going to have a problem, just like the books it started with the trans. Now, if somehow we don't even have critical black, critical thinking, critical thinking in, in, in Florida. This is how it started, guys. It starts with one marginalized group, and then it's like a poison. It goes to another marginalized group. Everybody should be up outraged about this.
we have a bunch of comments and uh if you haven't been to utah i'm not surprised that this is extremely red state and extremely conservative state this is what they do like this is not shocking uh oh and another thing said they need a third bathroom for trans dolly face says little girls be in these bathrooms Epic Jackson said, uh, create a third bathroom. The Wiley Show, Armand, your friend, said, I don't want my niece using the restroom with those people. Ooh. And Mr. Reese 7488 said, so annoying what they say. The bathroom in your home is gender neutral. Why are you so pressed? Wait, what? And Mr. Burns said, I'm sorry, but they just need a unisex bathrooms. And you wash your hands in an open area. I don't want anyone with a schlong in the bathroom with me. Unisex bathrooms for everyone. Wow, some strong mm. opinions. From yeah, that's opinion. what's crazy. Like, why does it matter? That's the problem. Why does it matter? It's just homophobia. Like, it really, it does, it sh you shouldn't care what another person has between their legs if they're transgender. Like, why do you care? Like, I don't understand that. I, I never understand why. And, and kids, your kids shouldn't be looking at other women or other men in the bed. They shouldn't see anybody other than themselves naked in the bathroom anyway. So, that whole idea of there's kids in the bathroom, well, you need to make sure your kids ain't looking at nobody. They should be going to the bathroom and getting out. Like, I don't get it. Okay, the comments keep coming in, but we don't have time for all the comments. We will probably touch upon this again in the future. Billboard just announced their annual Women in Music Awards show in a recent IG post, and they hinted at who be named Women of the Year with these three clues. One, she has made Billboard history. Two, she has sold out stadiums on tour. And three, she has a popular nickname. All right, y'all want to take a guess of who this is? Uh, it sounds like Beyonce to me. That's what I, I was going to say. I don't think, does Taylor, does Taylor Swift have a nickname? I'm not familiar if Taylor Swift has a nickname or not, but sounds like Beyonce to me. That's where I was going with it. It should be Beyonce. I hope it is. But the way they've been trying to shove Taylor Swift down our collective throats lately, I wouldn't be surprised if they pull a little switch Ruth in, but it should be Beyonce. I'm going to go ahead and say that. Mm -hmm. All right. Moving on. Our girl Vivica A. Fox recently sat down with the host of Black Girl Grinding, Lauren LaRosa, to explain her comments on Taraji P. Henson's treatment and unfair pay. Take a look. I'm a worker bee. Right. I have a tendency to not complain. Um, that I do the work. I, I do the work. I complain afterwards. I pick up the phone. If there's a problem, I call my people. That's what they're there for. That's how they're supposed to earn their money. All right. Can you relate to Vivica's comments or would you address your concerns head on? Go ahead, Armand. Um, I love Vivica Fox. Just let me start, start by saying that. And I agree with her. You know, now in the past, I've been one of those people that can kind of just go for the juggler, but you burn bridges that way. So I believe letting your people handle it, it keeps the mess out of, out of your hands, right? So those people need to earn their check. So let them have those grievances. Let those people go back and forth with production and producers and networks, you know? And I think that she was right. I think, and also I think that people are trying to trash Vivica for, you know, seemingly throwing shade at Taraji. But listen, everybody didn't have to jump on that Taraji bandwagon just because she was a black woman coming online, coming against, you know, Oprah or the color purple or whatever. No one had to jump on that bandwagon. Taraji decided that she wanted to speak out. That was on her. Everybody didn't have to ban behind her because she was a black woman speaking out. If I didn't have that story, I didn't have that story, baby. To each their own. All right, Al. I think, listen, D D Vivica Fox doubled down. She's got 10 toes down on this. And I just feel, I'm like Armand on this. Like, they really are trying to trash her in the comments. And my thing is, you guys got to remember, Vivica Fox was the premier black actress in Hollywood in the 90s and the early 2000s. Vivica Fox was one of the first black women to hit a billion dollars in the in the, in the box office when black women weren't getting those type of roles. She was in blockbuster movies and films like Independence Day, Kill Bill, Batman and Robin. She worked with Will Smith. She was in freaking a, a Michael Jackson video and Janet Jackson video for God's sake. She was that woman. And I think the reason why she was that woman is because she knew how to handle her business and she knew how to keep mess off of her name when it came to her jobs in Hollywood. Now, does Taraji have a right to talk about her experience? 100%. But it doesn't mean that just because Vivica didn't have the experience doesn't mean Vivica's not supporting Taraji and what she's feeling and going through right now. And I think that's where we need to separate the two in the conversation. 
Precious B said she could have kept quiet. Uh, here for fun said, who cares about Miss Fox's thoughts? Honestly, damn, what people do. Rosemary Watson said, Viv is speaking her truth. And Karen Z said, I don't agree with her. I'm not saying that. And Butter Scrotum said, Vivica's, no. Y'all are messy, okay? Stevie Ray said she doubled down. So, okay, we have one more comment. Plain Jane said, y'all cannot make Vivica say what y'all want her to say. Her experience is her own, and in no way did she shit on Taraji. It's just so many layers to things, y'all. That's always my point. There's always different layers. It's not what you think. Being on the outside looking in and do not, not even having a, 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 a foot in the game. So... All right. And I'm and I'm not letting somebody else stop my bag. Like I'm not stopping my bag for Taraji. She ain't gonna pay my mortgage or my rent. <laughs> Bro, that's on you. You black by yourself. I'm not black wow. you. <laughs> you know, this thing all started from press junkets and, and people asking Taraji questions. She didn't come out and just say, This is my cause and this is what I want to say. And then the media picks up on this and then it becomes the story and the narrative and it becomes way bigger than it is. I bet you she answered 9,000 other questions, but this is the one they're going to harp on. Mm -hmm. But then she ran with it and ran with it. Then she came back and was trying to like kind of clean it up and, about, and say she had a great experience and then wanted to change the narrative. When first people were like with her, so she was liking it. And then when people when you know, she got sticky... Then she came back. Well, you know, I had a great experience. It was all good. I just want everybody to focus back on the movie. But she knew what she was doing. Then people were trashing Oprah. And even to the point where Fantasia had to come out, I'm like, listen, I wanted my own car. Like, I didn't have those problems. She thought everybody was going to be on her side, but they weren't. So at the end of the day, girl, you did it to yourself, Taraji. And I like Taraji, but listen, I'm not getting that sinking ship with you because you feel some type of way about your wages. Because if it was all up for you and down for those other people, you wouldn't have got out there and spoke out because you were quiet when Monique was doing her thing. So, mm. girl, you're in, your, you're in this ship by yourself and let it sink, baby. Oh, you know what? I stand, I'm, I stand corrected. She was the one apparently that they're saying that she's the one that brought it up. So I guess she really felt, uh, felt it's in her soul about it. So that does change things. And didn't we say that it really affected the, the success of that movie? It did. Do so think who takes responsibility for that? Do y'all think it's going to affect her career? Absolutely. Taraji Bianzine is cooked for a minute. She's mm. good. You think so? I believe she's cooked. Mm -hmm. Because I'm not enough people weren't standing with her. Like, a lot of the other actresses were like, we're good. You know what I mean? You notice, like... Oprah and Fantasia are like this now. They were just at the Grammys. Yeah, I think Fantasia said she wanted to drive. She yeah. wanted to have her own car. She wanted to drive to the set. Damn, this is right. tricky. All right, y'all. Coming up. Okay. Okay. One more comment. Veronica Smith said, why they ain't mad at Fantasia or the other black women in the movie? Well, they haven't really been the ones that have been vocal. That's why. And Sarah M said, yeah, because she didn't want to get blackballed. All right. All right. Moving on. Coming up, we have a shocking Hollywood breakup alert. And later, Kanye West is comparing himself to Elvis. Can't wait to discuss this. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Freedom. It's at the core of who we are. The freedom to live without fear, to jog where we please to wear a hoodie, the freedom to breathe. Before we celebrate the freedom most Americans have, we must fight for the freedom all Americans deserve. Because all lives can't matter until black lives matter. How you been liking it, Dustin? I love it here. I love sparring with you. I love talking trash with Claudia. T-G-I-F. What y'all drinking on? Buttery Chardonnay, my go-to when it comes to spilling this tea. 1942, baby. It's been a celebration all week. Every weekday. Yeah. Are you going to have any left? I'm about the big bottles, Al. <laughs> <laughs> How big is it? <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's not be sexually harassing our co-hosts this early in the show. I'm not saying we won't. It just going to be this early. <laughs> on Fox Soul. This one's for the real ballers and shot callers the sisterhood of women in tech. They're discovering cures, building apps and programming the blockchain. They're CEOs, worldwide hustlers who can make it rain. They're tearing down the old boys club and seeing big gains. 
Because when women in tech come together, you know they make that change. My mom wanted my life to be better than what she had as a kid. When I became a mom myself, I feel like my whole world changed. You don't have to be a climate scientist to want to protect the earth. And you always want the next generation to have something better than what you had. All right, y'all, let's get into this Hollywood breakup alert. Podcaster Bobby Althoff's husband has reportedly filed for divorce. Now, this news comes after Bobby's rapid rise in the fame in fame in the podcast world. Now, do you think her husband may, may not have been able to handle her growth in her career? And he felt a way out. Honestly, Claudia, I don't even know who she is. I, 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 I I'm not sure. I, I really don't. I don't know who she is. I know. Is this the one that recently did the the interview with Suki Hana? She's a white lady that has a very dry sense of humor, the dry, deadpan kind of sense of humor, that people say that she kind of jacked, uh, what is it, Funny Marco's style, and, and, and she rose to fame. She gets a lot of uh, interviews with rappers, like uh, okay. uh, Offset, and it's like uh, these really awkward moments. So, But Armand, you know who she is, right? Yeah, I know who she is. I think, personally, because she started off do on TikTok doing, like, mommy vlog kind of videos, and then... She kind of she did an interview with Funny Marco and he kind of catapulted her into like this dry, awkward uh, humor, comedy type podcasting. And then she did like Little Yachty, then Drake and it did Offset and it just start taking off. And uh, we the people were like, Damn, who's this white girl that just kind of took over, you know, Funny Marco's whole style. But now to find out that her and her uh, husband are, divor are divorcing. I personally think that probably, you know, he did get a little intimidated. Like, I will say as a man, sometimes men can get intimidated by their wives or women, girlfriends, um, when they're making more money or more famous or getting a lot of attention, especially, you know, she was probably getting a lot of male attention. She was being around a lot of rappers. So perhaps his mm. ego got bruised a little bit and, you know, she wasn't available to make those mommy videos anymore. And she was now becoming the star and, you know, him being an engineer, he may have felt like a little insecure about it. And, you know, they said that the breakup comes, uh, the filings were saying that it was ir irreconcilable differences. So that's not really clear. It just sounds like someone feels some type of way. If you ask me, like, what are those irreconcilable dis differences? We don't know. So mm. I think it's a little envy. You think it's a little what? Envy? A little envy. I do. I feel like he's a little jealous a little bit. Unfortunately, this is a fate for a lot of women that end up mm. doing much better than their mates, and it's it makes them feel a way. But uh, our soulmates are feeling a way. They're like, um, Clowner said, uh, I seen that coming. Sylvia Andrews said, who are these people? Vanessa said, we don't know her. Fugi TV said, who is she? Go on to the next thing, Claudia. And <laughs> Yaya502 said, don't blame Bobby. Blame the rappers, black men that agreed to sit with her and help her blow up. Ooh, mm. good point. Good point, Yaya502. Kristen Cavallari is spilling the tea and claiming that Diddy tried hard to pursue her. She said that. Come on now. <laughs> she said that she turned down his advances even after he sent multiple gift deliveries to her home, including the biggest bouquet of flowers she's ever seen, along with chocolates, a teddy bear, and several bottles of Ciroc tequila. Cavallari said she saw these gestures as a love bombing. Clearly, Kristen dodged a bullet. What do you think about this, Armand? Um, I don't know. Because I feel like Diddy used to send those packages to everybody. Remember he was sent? <laughs> no, honestly, he, like, cause every, at this point, everybody yeah. has a Diddy story, right? Like, hell, I even have a Diddy story, you know? But, like, seriously, no. He would send these cases of like Ciroc and flowers to like his friends and it'll be on Instagram. So I don't know if this is one of those moments because I would see him, I would see it online. He would send that. Those were, that was part of the marketing for Ciroc. He would literally have this huge case and send it with a bouquet or flowers or candy on it. Um, so I don't know. I just think she's wanting to be in a conversation for a podcast, if you ask me. All right, Al. 
Yeah, I, I'm going to piggyback on that, Armand. I think you're right. And let me tell you something, Miss Kristen. Calm the heck down and tread lightly, young lady. You you, you are not allowed to say anything negative about Diddy as far as I'm concerned. First of all, we all know Diddy is a media guy. He loves attention. You were on the, one of the biggest shows in Hollywood, The Hills and Laguna Beach. Don't take it as you know, he was all smitten over you and everything. He probably was just trying to get a little bit of attention because you were on the big shows. Okay, leave it right there there and leave your and keep your comments to yourself and stop trying to lean in and say oh i dodged a bullet okay you didn't dodge the bullet when you accepted it when you accepted it if it's something you don't want send it back if you're offended send it back if you didn't like it send it back and last thing don't talk about it and my thing is why talk about it now you should have told that story on your podcast five years ago two years like why now why now right Oh God, Claudia! <laughs> y'all, Claudia. y'all! What? Wow, wow, what? yes, wow. Um, yeah, we're gonna move on. Singer, uh, singwriter Ch Tracy Chapman has made history after jumping on Luke Combs' cover of her hit song "Fast Car." Now, Chapman is now the first Black woman with a solo uh, songwriting credit on a number one country hit. Now, do you foresee more room for Black artists in the country space, although they really seem to get offended when others try to do it? Armand, what do you think about this moment, this moment for her? Uh, I think that it's great. I'm not really familiar with her, so um, I'm not going to you know, lie about that. But I think that this is great. And I, I'm seeing a lot of Black, like, emerging country artists coming out, and I think it's dope. And, it's, and it may bring a lot more of us to listen to country music, because I'm not really a fan of country music, but I will support, you know, Black people in the country. So I'll actually give it a listen at least maybe once to see if I like it. And maybe I may, I may become a listener of it. Did you say, you said you weren't that familiar with her, right? No. Yeah, because you're a little younger than a, yeah. than a, well, a lot younger. She was like really, really big when VH1 first came out back in mm. the day. And kind of in that, not Neo Soul, but she was in a different category. Al, what do you think about this what, woman? What would you say was her, what would you give an analogy of who she was back then? Like, we listened to Tracy Chapman a lot. Like she was a huge, huge, huge star in the 80s, in the 90s. I remember being in grad school and I just played her music all the time. Congratulations is what I want to say to Tracy Chapman. And congrats, you know, I was so glad to see her perform at the Grammys because we haven't seen her perform in like forever. But this is the thing. Country music need to do more stuff with black artists. The origins of the roots of country music comes from African immigrants because of their folk songs, because of their folk tales that was the beginning of country music so the fact that it's all singular one race now is concerning to me when people say oh black people are trying to come into our genre now black people are trying what it comes from us it comes from us so i'm glad to see her stepping into this space i'm glad to see her getting her flowers and i'm glad to see her back on stage and singing again well, you know, white folks don't like us, uh, you know, getting attention for stuff that they stole from us. Like we started first, like our, our rock and roll as well. Atlas Fountainhead said black people invented country music. Our dog said there's a lot of black country singers. And Mr. Burns said black people invented country and rock music. So it only makes sense. And Veronica Smith, much like you, Armand said, she's before my time, but I liked what I found when I searched for her. And you know what? This is an example of getting your flowers better late than never. We all know her to be a big star, and I like that people are kind of getting a second look that were great back when they didn't, didn't really get the complete flower bouquet. She got some of them, but she's getting more. Right. Now. And then do you remember Luke Holmes sampled her music? That's pretty significant because you remember when Nicki Minaj tried to sample her music back in the day? Do you guys remember that? No. Oh, right. And they got into it. Or and they got into sued. it. Yes, and she yes. had to sue her. And, yes. and she didn't clear it. She didn't, uh, Tracy Chapman didn't clear mm -hmm. the song. You don't remember that? And she had to mm -hmm. sue Nicki Minaj? Yes, that happened. I remember. Mm. All right. Well, speaking of Black excellence, before we take a break, let's check out this Black History Moment sponsored by Nissan. Fox Soul celebrates Black history makers who have broken barriers and created change. Kicking off a new era in the NFL is the league's history-making Black officials. With a whistle around their necks and a yellow flag in their hands, these trailblazers are tackling diversity one play at a time. Four of these referees attended HBCU colleges, Norfolk State University, Florida A&M, Howard University, and Paul Quinn College. 
This historical moment comes 54 years after the first black referee, Burl Toler, was introduced in 1965. Today, 36 of the NFL's 122 officials are African Americans. On mm. any given Sunday, fans can witness history as these black men and women referees make calls on the football field. There has to be a time where the first stops and it becomes normal for people of all cultures and people of color to be in leadership positions. And I, I guess that's where a lot of that comes from in me, knowing that it doesn't just stop with me. If I do well, that creates more opportunities for others. These history-making referees behind the stripes are an example of black excellence and progress towards diversity in American professional sports. Honoring Black History Month on TGIF, proudly presented by Nissan. Experience a whole new thrill of driving. All right, as we prepare for the Super Bowl coming up, what are your thoughts on this, Al? I, you know what? I'm loving this. Nissan, you're going to make me go out and buy a Nissan. I swear to goodness. I love this type of integration. You know, I do this every year. I love the fact that they are exposing us in ways that we're we're not familiar. I think there should be more black referees in the NFL. That That's less than 30%, whereas 70% of the athletes in the NFL are African-American males. So why can't black referees, uh, uh, um, you know, officiate over them? But I do want to give a shout out to Jerome Boger. Jerome Boger in 2020 took a step that has changed the game. He created his entire staff of black referees. It was an all black officiating staff that called that game between the LA um, Rams and Tampa Bay Buccaneers. What a historic moment. Thank you, Nissan, for sharing this with us. And thank you for Fox Soul for putting them and highlighting them. I'm here for this because the population of Black America is still, what, 13 14%? And the fact that in this particular white-owned business, yes, we're Black employed, but white-owned business, 30% of us are there officiating and uh, kind of leveling the playing field there. I think it's amazing. And thank you, Nissan, for this fact. And uh, we love it. Thank you so much. All right, coming up next, find out why Kanye West is comparing himself to Elvis. And later, are female rappers being authentic nowadays? Oh, Lord, keep it locked. We'll be right back. My mother was always very familiar with her neighborhood, but one day she stopped at the stop sign for much longer than usual. And uh, she didn't know whether she should go forward or, or turn. And she wasn't even really sure where she was at. It was very unsettling for her. I felt so much better after my son told me, mom, I don't want you to worry or be afraid. I'll be there for you and we'll figure it out. been liking it, Dustin. I love it here. I love sparring with you. I love talking trash with Claudia. T-G-I-F. What y'all drinking on? Buttery Chardonnay, my go-to when it comes to spilling this tea. 1942, baby. It's been a celebration all week. Every weekday. Yeah. Are you going to have any left? I'm about the big bottles, Al. <laughs> <laughs> How big is it? <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's not be sexually harassing our co-hosts this early in the show. I'm not saying we won't. It's just going to be this early. <laughs> on Fox Soul. This one's for the real ballers and shot callers, the sisterhood of women in tech. They're discovering cures, building apps and programming the blockchain. They're CEOs, worldwide hustlers who can make it rain. They're tearing down the old boys club and seeing big gains. Cause when women in tech come together, you know they make that change. There was a time in my life where I was extremely homesick. I decided that I needed a pet. When I first saw a turtle, my heart was full. He jumped up and kissed me and like jumped right into my arms. I immediately went up to the volunteers at the shelter and said, I want him, like he's gotta come home with me. Not anything but lonely. Every day with turtle is a perfect day. Welcome back to TGIF. All right, y'all, Kanye West spoke on his recent struggles with booking venues due to his past anti-Semitic remarks. He said, I have not been allowed to perform in a year. Feels like the Elvis Presley movie. 
Do you think Kanye West's journey is comparable to that of Elvis Presley, Oman? I feel like Kanye West is being humbled. And I like Kanye West. I really do. But I just think that you can't go around thinking you're above reproach and you can say whatever you want to say, be disrespectful, and then think that you're just going to have your way or, or think that people won't, you know, stop op certain opportunities for you. So I just think Kanye West needs to, needs to humble himself a little bit. Um, and him comparing himself to Elvis and Jesus and got all these different comparisons, it's just out of control. Kanye West, get a grip, take your medicine, and act normal for a change, okay? <laughs> Honestly. Yeah? I just, I'm confused. Remember you heard it here. You heard it first here. Kanye is going to go build a place or buy a place to perform in. Why Why won't he? I mean, he built a school because he wanted to, to create a curriculum to teach people. He built that place, that campground where he did his Sunday service. Why doesn't he perform there? Why? I, I'm confused. I'm just confused about this altogether. He has enough money to build his own or buy a building to perform in. He d he's done it in the past. Do it again. Claude Aaron um, said Elvis was king of pill popping. So yeah, I agree. Hot commodity seven seven said Ye is Ye is annoying, and I need him to sit down. And the Wiley Show says Kanye West needs to take his meds. He is too much. And our dog said Kanye is so delusional, but it's really the fault of the fans for calling him a genius. Maniac seems more appropriate. We're gonna say something, Armand. Uh, I just think that at some point, you know, I think I've already said it. He just, I don't know. I like Kanye, so I don't want, I don't want to go in on him too bad. But it's, you just can't just say and do whatever you want and think that there's not going to be any kind of repercussions. Like I just don't understand that. So uh, I think he's, uh, you know, a product of believing his own hype and a little bit too much. Accept the accolades, accept the criticism, but when you just go too far, it's, it seems like he just thought he was untouchable. And yeah. he, this is probably the first time in his life he's ever had to like kind of be called the task for things he's done. Like, let's not act like he's sitting there minding his business. He's done stuff that's like kind of troll people, I think. And the I, whole bipolar thing can only glass so far. Like that can only go so far. I like Claudia what Vanessa the soulmate says. She said he should just do a residency and have people come see him. Would y'all go see Kanye West at a Vegas residency? Well, uh, probably not. Mm -hmm. Probably not, but I'm saying. So that's why he's not doing it. Well, no, he could do a res he's begging to get in to get into other venues, right? He could do a residency on all that land he owns. Where was he doing his Sunday service that they started to build all those those structures? I don't know, but didn't the people say they didn't get paid? Hmm. Uh, Jay Ryan said Kanye is nothing more than a truth teller. Oh, okay, all right. Fitness influencer Jesse Swanker opened up about pleasing his transgender girlfriend. He said that giving his girlfriend oral sex does not make him gay because his girlfriend is very feminine. He also says that his girlfriend's penis even looks girly. What is your stance on this topic, Al? Uh-uh, uh-uh, you're not, uh-uh. <laughs> You're not going to set me up on this one, Claudia. Nope, 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 nope. I'm still recuperating for what I said about Neil Long. I'm like, uh, nope, nope, nope. I'm going to pass this to Armand. Come on, Armand. Listen, you guys, listen. Some women have penises. And at the end of the day, he's not gay. He's straight. I agree. I agree. He is not gay. He likes women. She just has an extra piece of candy. But he does not like a man. He wouldn't like anybody like, like me or Al. He likes a feminine looking human being. Some women have penises and it is what it is. I believe he's straight. I don't believe he's gay. Really? I don't believe he's gay. He's sucking on a, on a penis. On a woman. It's a transgender woman. Okay. Okay, I got it. So maybe we should maybe if maybe calling him gay is mislabeling him. Okay, I can I can work with you on that one. So what would we call him? Is he straight? I don't know what we would call him, but I don't know if I would call him gay. Would you call he, him straight? Because he doesn't like boys. I got it, but I'm saying would you call him straight? I would call him straight. Hmm. Okay. Well, let's ask the resident. Claudia, email. what would you call him? <laughs> um, he's sucking dick. What are you talking about? Why are we playing this game? Why are we sitting there playing dumb? I'm not about to do this with y'all. I'm just not. I'm not. She's transgender woman. She is. I'm going to give her that. I'm not about to do this with y'all. I'm just not. Like, 
What are we doing here? Uh, comments. Increased Mather said people are insane. Oh. Pat Williams says no woman has a peen. And Nob Nob says your gay sir is okay. He's talking about sucking dick and that her dick looks feminine. I'm going to go ahead to the next thing, Claudia. Keep it locked because coming up next are female rappers being authentic nowadays. We'll be right back. Scene 103, take one. I thought we'd be on the same page about this, and we're not. How do I know the way I'm going to respond to it? I want you to get the vaccine, because I want you to be safe. What if you end up in the hospital? That's what I'm scared of. If you was to die, man, that would literally kill me, man. I hug you? Yes. <laughs> if it made you feel that way, bro, I would probably do. I love you, I love you too. This one's for the real ballers and shot callers the sisterhood of women in tech. They're discovering cures, building apps and programming the blockchain. They're CEOs, worldwide hustlers who can make it rain. They're tearing down the old boys club and seeing big gains. Cause when women in tech come together, you know they make that change. Freedom, it's at the core of who we are. The freedom to live without fear, to jog where we please, to wear a hoodie. The freedom to breathe. Before we celebrate the freedom most Americans have, we must fight for the freedom all Americans deserve. Because all lives can't matter until black lives matter. So bad right now, but I'm not going to. Put some eggplants in the chat if you like that last segment. If you agree with Armand Wiggins, <laughs> eggplants and some tongues in the chat. All right, welcome back to TGIF. Stunner Girl had a few words for female rappers. She wrote, Why female rappers feel like they gotta put on this hood persona and rap about guns or bleep? They don't do. Talk about life in the suburbs and how you wouldn't smack a fly. Not for real. Speak your truth instead of somebody else's. Do you think female rappers these days are not authentic? Oman, I know you speak a lot on female rappers, so I'm going to go to you first. I feel like they are authentic. I'm not really sure where she came from with that, because I feel like a lot of female rappers, I mean, they're damned if they do, they're damned if they don't. So she's saying they're speaking like gangsters, but some of us would argue all they talk about are their vaginas. So I just feel like female rappers as a whole, they never really get the proper respect. Like, the bar is always so high for them and the goalpost has always moved and it's just really shocking that stunner girl is like saying things like this um you know because she's adding to those you know narratives of female rappers so I, I believe female rappers are authentic and i love female rap i love female rappers so no i don't agree with her at all all right al do you agree or disagree yeah i think i think you know maybe it's the wrong messenger i think the message could be could resonate if it was coming from someone else because isn't she on a show that basically promotes violence and they get rewarded for all of that bad behavior so i i don't know i mean that seems made up to me too so what what are we doing here but then again maybe male rappers do it too <laughs> fat yeah, joe, everybody makes fat joe, lies. fat joe right fat joe said to gail king and charles barkley that what 90 70 percent 90 percent of his raps are lies right a lot of his lies. if you think a murderer or a killer or someone who's moving all this way is going to record a track if you have ever been to a studio and see how they record a track you're saying all this hard stuff and then the, this white nerdy 50 60 year old man says Sir, Mr. Dog, or whatever, can you run that back? Oh, okay, go back. And what part? Do I, like, it's not very gangster. It's very, it's an art. It, they're working. They're performers. You know what I mean? A lot of it's fake. We all know about the rappers that go home to the suburbs or grew up in the suburbs and are trying so hard to put this persona out because it's entertainment. 
Um, Nat said, hey, again, male rappers rap about stuff they didn't do as well. And Bambi310 says she needs to speak about her truth, about how she was sleeping with the Zeus CEO as well, oh, but ooh. wants to blast everybody else's business. Oh, damn. Vanessa said they dominated rap. What do you mean? And Vanessa again said no one respects the art of rap anymore. It's a quick money grab. Damn. She's right. Hmm. It sales. All right. Check out this Twitter question that was everybody was talking about. It says, what's the dumbest reason you and your friend fell out? Like, what was the dumbest thing, most petty thing y'all fell out with your friend about, fellas? Who wants to oh, go? I'll go first. I have one. It was so stupid, too. So uh, me and my friend, best friend almost didn't talk for a year uh, because, you know, mind you, his birthday is on November 1st. And so I called him around like maybe 10 p.m. on, you know, October 31st, you know, to talk. And, you know, to me, that was the happy birthday. But on his actual birthday, I called him maybe at 10 p.m. that night. And because I didn't call at midnight or earlier during the day, he was upset with me. And I was a bad friend and did not talk to me. I mean, blocked me on Facebook, Instagram and everything. And like we were not talking for a year because I called him too late in the day on his birthday. <laughs> I have the exact same story. That's crazy. Really? Yes. Um, I'll go ahead and then I'll go to you, Al. This girl that I was friends with, she said that she had never been given flowers before by any man. And I thought that was like one of the saddest things that I've ever heard in my life. So I sent her flowers, like not in a I'm hollering at you way. It was like a, I think everybody should like receive flowers, even men. I think, that, I think that's like a nice gesture. And when I was like living in Atlanta, I was running around taping Atlanta Housewives. And I think I called her at like five at night. It wasn't even late. It was like 5 p.m. And she tried to like check me like, you should have been one of the first people to call me. I said, bitch, are we dating? Or are you my friend? Because I'm Ooh. doing, like, I sent you a gift card. I sent you a, some flowers. Like, I, I, what? And she really had an attitude that I wasn't one of the first ones. I think it was like a one-sided kind of, it was giving single white female just a little bit. Like, that's weird to me, you know? Al, what about you? You have any? Yeah, well, you know, what my childhood buddy, we grew up together side by side when I moved back to the States. He's my first cousin. He's my best friend, you know? Um, and so when I was getting married, you know, of course, I invited him to the wedding. And I invited him to be my um, my man, my major. I mean, what do you call him? I invited him to be my groomsman, like, like my uh Best man. Best man. There you go. I invited him to be my best man. And so he was like, hey, you know, if you want me to be your best man, then you need to pay for me and my family. And he had like two or three kids at that time. He said, you need to pay for me and my family to come to New York City. And I was like, hey, listen, you know, I got a big family of my own I'm taking care of. But we I rented a, a charter bus to bring all the family from the south to the north and both you know my ex-wife did the same thing they all rode the same charter bus they made stops in all the major cities all you had to do is get to a stop get on the bus we'll make sure you get there and we make sure you get back and he said no so he didn't want to take the bus to your wedding he didn't want he didn't want to, <laughs> he didn't want to get on the bus look my mother took the bus and if my hmm. mother and my sisters can take the bus my best friend can take the bus like all our all our family was on that bus and it was a luxury bus that fed you and you didn't want for anything on that bus like so oh, we felt like that bus we ride? talking huh how long was that bus ride it's only four hours oh really that's not bad yeah you're going from virginia to no i'm sorry it's uh, eight hours. You're going from Virginia mm. to D.C. and from D.C. to New York City. Look, our mind's like, mm, I don't know. Oh, eight hours on a bus is crazy, Al. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't well, know. For your wedding, too? That's crazy. Well, what are, you think I'm supposed to pay for the, my entire family? You know how many are in my family? You know how many aunts and uncles? My guest list alone was 250 people. My guest mm. list alone. So I'm supposed to pay for 250 people to get to the city to celebrate my day? Maybe the nah. special people, maybe the mom, the groomsmen, like certain people can get the flight. Everybody else can do the bus. Like the, the groomsmen, the mom, dad, sister, flight. Okay. Everybody else, cousins, nieces, nephews, uncles. <laughs> have to get on the bus? Bus. <laughs> That's a that's 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 really expensive. So I, I'm gonna have to pass on that. I can't do I can't do New York City <laughs> hotels 
plus fly you all and then people miss their flights and then you have to manage their flights nah we have a soulmate comment nina 878 said just cut the cord on a 40 year old friendship because my friend stood me up on my birthday and still haven't heard from her it's shaking my head a lot of okay. birthday shade like a lot of people falling yes. out over their birthday and not feeling yeah like that's interesting anything. And my thing is it's with these people that follow up with their friends over their birthday. Listen, if your friends are busy, booked and busy and working, listen, understand that they may call you later. At least they called you. But listen, if I'm working, I'm not calling you for it, especially if you're my friend. I'm you not sleeping with you. All right. That's right. All right. Speaking of time, we are out of time. I want to thank my co-hosts, Al Reynolds and Armand Wiggins, for joining us tonight. Thanks for watching us on YouTube. Stay tuned for Paging Dr. Shonda. Have a great night. We'll talk to you later. Have a good night, soulmates. Peace out.